She is a fabulous member of the Clay Travis Buck Sexton Podcast Network, as is, by the way, Carol Markowitz, whose first podcast is now up. You can go download that. And Tudor Dixon has been doing a fabulous job of putting up consistently entertaining, smart, original content uh, on the Tudor Dixon podcast, which is distributed through the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Network. Tudor, we've got all sorts of serious things going on in the world, but you are a former star of a horror movie, if I remember correctly. (laughs) Uh, Tomorrow is October 13th. You have got four daughters and we are coming up closely on Halloween. Do you have your Halloween costume picked out yet? Do the girls have their costumes picked out yet? Let's go totally light to start off. The girls absolutely have theirs. We have Dorothy. I think we have two Barbies. And gosh, the oldest is Miraculous Ladybug. Got to get Miraculous Ladybug in there. So yes, they are all set. And this is the earliest that I've been set for October for Halloween. So I'm really happy about it. I don't know what I'll do. Okay, so that, uh, I I can't wait for Halloween either. Tomorrow, by the way, October 13th, Friday the 13th, just beware. No telling what uh, craziness might happen associated with that. It's Um, a great day to have a big live event, Clay, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, well, you you and Tudor are going to be doing that tomorrow in South Bend, Indiana. But, uh, Tudor, you uh, have got Michigan, Michigan State. You ran for governor of the state of Michigan. We've been talking a lot in the program so far about just being stunned by the lack of moral, uh, uh, just just honesty from so many of these colleges and universities. Are you surprised by how many students and faculty um, all over the country have been refusing to condemn Hamas's terror attack? And even worse than that, saying that Israel's actually the bad guy here. Oh, I think we're all surprised. I mean, I've talked to so many people who are just shocked by the fact that people are so openly anti-Semitic. You know, we had heard this boogeyman of there's these people on the right that are anti-Semitic. It it has been overwhelmingly young people, too, which I think is the saddest part. And I don't know that they fully understand what they're saying or why they're saying it. But I think that is where this indoctrination comes in to play. And we had been talking for so many years about woke, woke this, woke that. But it seems like this has really been ingrained in the school system. And, you know, BLM was in our school systems. They were doing these programs for kids. And now we have BLM coming out and saying that they're on the side of Hamas. I mean, they're on the side of a terrorist organization. They have been educating our kids. Now we see our college students who are suddenly coming out on, on the side of a terrorist organization. This goes from being woke to indoctrination to radicalization it's something we're completely shocked by i think it's interesting that you see some of these harvard students come out now and go oh actually that's not what we meant but we've also seen recently these studies that have come out that say kids right now are so desperate to be a part of something that they're joining things and and becoming activists on on subjects that they don't fully understand i think that's partially what we're seeing but we are very much in dangerous territory Tudor, um, the Biden administration response to this so far, I mean, Tony Blinken, the secretary of state, is over in in uh, Tel Aviv right now, and he's trying to represent the U.S. And, and support our ally Israel and also talking to other you know regional allies about what's going to happen in the days and, and weeks ahead. Um, what do you think about what Biden has said so far and and the, the general approach that they've taken uh, in the aftermath of this heinous terrorist attack. You know, I have to say, I wanted him to come out strong and say that he supports Israel, and he has. He has said that. And, you know, listening to Antony Blinken this morning talking and talking about his own family members who had been Holocaust survivors and his experience with that and understanding what it is to be an American Jewish person and having that sympathy and, and that the, the, his heart goes out to the folks in Israel and that he they have our full and total support as Americans. I mean, that's what we want to hear. I think that there has been a little bit of, you know, why won't they call out Iran? Why won't they do that? And I think that for the most part, most Americans right now are feeling like we need to cut off the head of the beast and say there this is the beast and there needs to be rep- there needs to be repercussions repercussions for this and you can't just say we're going to continue to give them money they're not going to have sanctions they have to be tough on iran but they're not doing that and that i've been disappointed about 
There's no doubt. Now, uh, you and Buck are going to be getting together up in South Bend, Indiana tomorrow, I believe, right? What are the details? What are you guys up to? And how can people get out and be able to hang out with you? Yeah, we're going to be out there. Um, it, I think it starts, we open the doors at 6 or 6. Wait, I'm getting, yes, yeah, 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock. And then we go until about 9 30 10 o'clock at night so come out and see us we definitely want to we'll be chatting about everything that's going on in the news we'll have all the details for you on where everything stands and we're hoping that tomorrow is a pretty calm day we're hearing some rumblings of there may be some kerfuffles uh, around the country so we're trying to make sure that we get all of the news there for you when we're there in south bend this is the uh the mnc nation noise event at the century center's Bendix Theater for those of you who are in the South Bend area and you can still get tickets at clayandbuck.com uh, Casey Hendrickson who's uh, an old friend of mine great radio host up in South Bend will be there uh, Tudor will be there I'll be there obviously a lot of news to cover a lot of discussion that we have to have on a whole range of of issues um, and if I could just switch gears for one second Tudor do you see this poll Fox News poll that has Biden um, Biden beating Trump in the Fox News poll by a little bit, but losing to DeSantis and Nikki Haley. Did this was this a shock to you? What what do you make of this one? You know, I I'm not totally shocked by that because I think that the country as a whole they don't necessarily follow Trump's um, his rallies as much as they follow what's going on with the folks that are going on Fox News, to be honest, and what, what's going on in these debates. So we sort of kind of anticipated that there could be a jump for these other candidates if Trump were to stay out of these debates for too long, if he weren't out there in the mainstream with these folks. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing. People are going, OK, well, we're seeing him at these rallies, but we're not seeing him engage with the GOP, engage with the candidates. I think people are kind of tired of that. They want to see him engage or they're going to say, hey, I see Nikki Haley very serious out there right now about what's going on in the world. And Nikki Haley is an interesting candidate for a lot of women because that's the demographic that we have struggled with. And a lot of women go, well, I like her answer on abortion. I like her answer on foreign policy. And I, I think that DeSantis is the same. People are starting to go, well, you know, if we're not going to see Trump come in and engage with these other candidates, we're going to take a look at the candidates who are out there engaging with each other. Uh, Tudor, do you feel optimistic about Republicans winning in Michigan in 2024? I mean, I know we're sitting at 13 months out, but what kind of groundswell, what kind of response are you seeing? Uh, Joe Biden certainly way underwater. I think I saw in recent polls in terms of his popularity in Michigan. Would you bet on Republicans winning the state of Michigan right now, 13 months out, based on what you're seeing? Uh, I wouldn't bet on it. I mean, I think Michigan is always going to be a tough state. I think that we have to get a lot more people to go out to the polls. They are very good at getting people out to the polls. I think the Democrats are going to have an interesting year in Michigan, though, because we already have quite a bit of conversation about what's going on in Israel. And if that continues, that's going to be a, a, a tough balance for Democrats in the state of Michigan, because we have a, a very large part of our population that supports the Palestinians and the Democrats yeah, have come I'm out and said... I'm sorry to cut you off there because we talked about this yesterday and I got the county where Dearborn was in wrong uh, and we've got a big audience right now in Michigan. Could you believe uh, when we saw that huge rally in Dearborn, Michigan, where they were saying Hamas is not a terrorist organization and and basically that uh, that Israel is the bad guy? I mean, that happened in the state that you ran in, not far outside of Detroit. Right. And so you have Gretchen Whitmer who w waffles on whether or not she's going to come out with a statement. She just oh, talks yeah. about the region and all of that. And really, you have to understand that in the state of Michigan, she's doing that because she's a politician. She's not a leader. And so she's looking at this politically. And that's what a lot of our politicians, especially on the Democrat side right now, they're confused. What do we do? How do we rally the base? Because the base is very split on this issue. And this issue doesn't seem to be going away. So I think Michigan is very much in play for Republicans and Democrats are struggling to figure it out. Republicans are still struggling to figure it out. We've got to get people to go out and vote. And there's methods that we have to use to do that, that you and I have talked about before, that Republicans are just not using right now. But 24 is our opportunity. Come see us tomorrow, everybody. Uh, MNC Nation Noise event, 95.3 MNC Nation Noise event at the Century 
uh, Center's Bendix Theater in South Bend, Indiana. Tickets available, clayandbuck.com. Tudor Dixon of the Tudor Dixon Podcast on the Clay and Buck Network. Great to have you. Thank you.